that's played host to 10 Super Bowls. Here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Washington Redskins. On first down, it's Smith. This one complete to Jordan Reed. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Back to the ground on first, it's Geis. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. To throw on second down is Smith. They'll go over the middle to Reed complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Smith finding his big tight end Reed for a Redskins first. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And a return across midfield into the 46-yard line. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? <laughs> You're exactly right. It takes some fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. To throw, it's Breeze. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll bring up a second and 13. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. From midfield, here's Breeze. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. That doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. 
Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. It's Richardson. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Smith on first down. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. No gain and it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. They'll hand it out to Geis, and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Throwing on third down, Smith. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked, instead it's incomplete. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. Ready. Yellow Breeze to throw on second down. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. Michael Thomas, by the way, Charles, 28 catches in the first two games of the season. By far and away the most in the league. An NFL record for two games, but I think he has his sights set on a 16-game record held by Marvin Harrison. 143 catches in a season. Now, that's a lot to ask for. And you know, baseball guys, right? When a guy hits a home run on opening day, he's on a pace for 162. We know that's not realistic, but the way they throw the football around and him being WR1 in New Orleans, he's going to dominate the passing game for the Saints. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Breeze hands to Ingram, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. 
Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, OK, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. They start on the ground with Geis. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. Just beating the play clock, Smith. Over the middle, complete. That's Richardson. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Smith, and that is incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Tressway now as he'll punt it away for the second time. at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. Here's Ginn. <laughs> A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They've had it twice, they punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? A gain of three, second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Here we go. Here we go. Still a nice play by the defense. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Tackle made there by Zach Brown. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun on third down, Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Now a play fake here on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Hill. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. If you run an out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? 
Toe tap. Yeah, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. Pass incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target. And it's second down. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Tight is right. Tight is right. Ready. 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 Again, it's Breeze. Throwing the out loud incomplete. That's Hill. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Ready. You ready? With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Ready. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And Thomas has it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Zach Brown coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now Breeze. It was DJ Swearinger right there on the coverage. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Ready. Ready. From the gun, it's Breeze. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Ryan Kerrigan, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This from 54 yards away. And that is no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Jordan in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Jordan coming off a Pro Bowl campaign in 2017, third time he's had that honor. 
and he continues to play better and better as his career extends. Think about it this way. Fourth in the league last year in sacks with 13. Helped the New Orleans Saints defense improve overall and helped lead them to the playoffs. And now he shares Pro Bowl honors with his father, Steve, who was a Pro Bowl tight end in the NFL. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's Patrick Robinson there on the stop. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Third and long, it's Smith. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Cameron Jordan in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Here's Tressway now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they tell their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Throwing on first down is Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, taking a glance across the NFL through two weeks of the season, you've got quite a few teams that are winless, which obviously makes sense two weeks in. But the John Gruden era, not off to the best start there at 0-2, Charles. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, Brandon. I mean, the Raiders, I believe this is the 15th time in franchise history they've started 0-2. None of the previous 14 times have they started 0-2 and made the playoffs. Mm. So the John Gruden era, not off to the start they're looking for, but I do think they're going to improve during the year. I wouldn't rule them out just yet. They might make a little bit of history with their franchise. I think the Steelers and the Browns at 0-1-1, it's an odd record, but the Browns actually feel halfway decent about it if they can fix their kicking. The Steelers, utterly disappointed they're 0-1-1. Yeah, but the Browns, you're right. They could very easily be 2-0 right now. Ready, ready, place on. Now Breeze on third down. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle, circle the Pro Bowl? <laughs> without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Now, Breeze again. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. They get a good chunk of that penalty yardage back. A gain of 15. Second down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that right. one. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. Now Breeze lost the football. 
On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. He is going to find Hill here. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Breeze now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Alvin Kamara really settling into the league in his second season. And, of course, he came out of Tennessee, but not a lot of people remember he started at Alabama. He did and got caught in that big mix of running backs at Bama. And they like those bigger, thicker runners, those guys who can break down defenses through the middle. Alvin Kamara ended up leaving Alabama, going to a junior college for a while. I believe he went to Hutchinson, Hutchinson. Junior College before matriculating at Tennessee and finding his way to the NFL, where he is now a star. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. Sometimes it pays to be lucky rather than good. That was not even the intended receiver on that pass. But still able to haul it in for the reception. They'll run here with Ingram. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Bree's going to throw. Incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn. And it's third and short. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. This Washington defense, they've stood tall the first two plays. Now third and goal. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. Shotgun now for Breeze. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This from 25 yards out. Puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Here's Harris to return it. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit 
and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And he's taken down here by the Saints. A.J. Klein. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now Smith throwing on third and long. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now it's Ginn. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points? The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super tall. A good pick up there, a 22. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Now Breeze. Caught on the left side by Gim. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Breeze to another longtime vet Gim for the New Orleans first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Breeze to throw again. And he'll run it over the middle. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one.
Bree's going to come up here first and 10, and he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Ready? Ready? So again, they'll throw with Breeze. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. The Saints on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third down and 12. To throw is Breeze. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Breeze now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Ready. We're waiting. Breeze now. Got a man open. It's Thomas. It's a touchdown for New Orleans. Michael Thomas, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints now add six to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Here's Harris to return it. The Redskins offense now, they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And the drive begins with a run by Geis. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. So it's halftime here in New Orleans with the Saints out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. And here's Lewis. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. 
Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Now Breeze throwing on second down. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Well, that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now a first down carry, it's Camara. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. to throw on second down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Ready, ready. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now, first and 15 following the delay of game. There's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it second and 10. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Breeze on the draw, gives to Kamara. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and nine. Ready, we're waiting. Throwing now is Breeze. And he locates Josh Hill, complete. And he'll be marked down deep in Washington territory. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. 
again has it complete. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. To throw, it's Breeze. That's caught, it's Thomas. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. Breeze now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Again, it's Breeze. Blitz coming and down he goes. Matt Ioannidis in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. That's his second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. They'll give it to him up the middle. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Single, single, single. Ready. Yellow waiting. Right. Breeze now on third and goal. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. I always laugh when I see guys like Deron Payne play because their ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage to find weak spots in the offensive front and get upfield and make plays. That's what they call playing the piano in the NFL. Those guys who can move it and then get to the quarterback. And Lutz's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me. I was. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Here's Harris to return it. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here's the Redskins offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Just work with me a second here, because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay, but now, you need to be 65 to 70 percent to be considered an elite quarterback, and in this ball game, I feel like we're playing old school, right around 50 percent. Yeah, he's under 50 percent. He needs to start hitting more targets. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. 
Here's Tressway now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On second down, here's Breeze. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. All the yards, completions, just another play that's a feather in the cap of the great career of Drew Brees. And wasn't he supposed to be too small to be an effective quarterback in yeah. the NFL? Yeah, how'd that work out? Yeah, well, his footwork, I think, really sets him apart. Remember, he was a junior tennis Ready? champion. Ready? Beat Andy Roddick, the future U.S. Open champion, back when they were in the juniors. I think that footwork really helps him be the great quarterback he is now. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. He's going to come up here first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Hey, ready. You ready? They'll run it now out of the gun. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it second and 14. A tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Tough first half for him. Unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, 
you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. This is caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. They'll look to run with Ingram. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. He'll get it up the middle. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Breeze now to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Josh Hill from four yards out. And the Saints add on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding a big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on him. Two points for them. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it a second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? On second down, here's Smith. Caught on the right side, Reed. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Smith on third down. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. That's good for a Redskin first down. Richardson on the reception from Smith. Smith now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. I said I need I said now a first down throw. It's Smith. They'll check it down to Geis. 
And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To the air again, Smith. Buying time to his left. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Even after more than a decade in the league, Smith still one to account for with his legs as he picks up a first. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. To throw on second down is Smith. Josh Doxson's got it complete. Smith finding Doxson that time for a Washington first. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Smith now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. And that'll set him back five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. They'll run it now out of the gun. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Here's Smith now on second down. Crowder's got it over the middle. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. The Redskins on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and nine. Play action. It's Smith. It's brought in by Dodson. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Geis, they'll try to run it. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. What a game this defense has played. They're pitching a shutout. So it'd be fun to watch down the stretch to see if their defensive coordinator continues to be as aggressive as he's been all game long. The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. From the gun, here's Smith. 
And this is caught in the end zone. It's Dotson for the Redskins touchdown. Josh Doxson from six yards away. And the Redskins are able to close the gap just a bit. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. Extra point good by Hopkins. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. Here's Hopkins now out to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Where Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go larga. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Now Breeze on third down. And Gim's got it. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. The chalk that one up is a gain of 34 on third down. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. 
seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Ready, ready, cut! Shotgun now for Breeze. Oh, there's that man again, it's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This to make it a three-score game late. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Going the other way. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky, but that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost should be. Snap, hold, kick, ball through the post. Didn't happen that way. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. On first down, it's Smith. His throw incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Redskins on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Smith. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores, they have to try and make something good happen. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Jordan Reed has it. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Now we've got whistles here before the snap. Was this on the Redskins? I think so. So out now come the Redskins. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Out of the gun, Smith. And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. Smith trying to get him to the line quickly with the clock rolling. And he spikes it with just a shade under a half a minute left. 29 seconds on the clock. The Redskins on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and a mile. Throwing again is Smith. Complete. Richardson has it. 
And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. 19 yards is the pick up there, but even with that, they're well short. It's fourth down. Now it's Smith, and this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore, and his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're going deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys chirping about, you know, I used to play quarterback in high school. I can do this until it becomes a game situation. Not quite the same in many cases. Ready. And they will take a knee here. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.